Bosun's Whistle Lanyard Knot, also known as a two-stranded diamond knot or sailor's lanyard knot. Okay, it comes with a couple of different names, but um, when completed and doubled, for example, it does make a rather beautiful and decorative um, keychain or lanyard knot, which was what it was originally used for. Um, the other thing I like about this key ring that we're going to make here is that um, if you've got short strands of cord left over from previous jobs, don't throw them away. Keep them and make yourself simple um, key rings or um, zip pulls or something like that. Um, because just a short length can be made into something beautiful as well. With this particular key ring that we're going to make, it's going to have a single lanyard knot on it and then a double lanyard knot on it. And so in this particular case, we need about three feet of um, cordage. So what I've done here now is I've got my leftover cordage. In this particular case, it is silver birch camouflage. So if you're stuck in the silver birch forest and you need some camouflaged um, paracord, this is the stuff to use. Right, so I'm going to now make the decorative keyring. It's going to have, in the keyring itself, it will have a single lanyard knot and then a double lanyard knot going down it. And what I'm using here is I'm using an off cut of paracord. This is the nice thing about this keyring that I'm making. It's a small decorative keyring, or it could even be a zip pull or something like that. Whatever you want to use it for, or even a soft shackle um, as such could be made from this. Um, but what I'm using here is I'm using some leftover three millimeter um, paracord. The actual full length of the cord itself is um, three feet. And this is the paracord that's left over from some previous job. When you're making this particular lanyard, I would suggest three feet is the minimum amount that you use when making this key ring. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to just basically center it over my finger like so. Just make sure it's nice and centered. And then I'm gonna separate out the cords like so. Having done that, I'm now going to start tying the first knot. And to do that, I'm going to take hold of the bottom or the left hand cord and form a loop in it, like so. And as you can see, I formed a loop in there and basically it comes out from there, around there, under itself, and then the working end is down here. But as I form the loop, I've also formed the loop over the top of my other lead here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top or the right hand lead now and I'm going to pass it underneath the first cord that I made or first cord that I put a loop in, bring it round, then over the top, underneath and then over the top again. So in other words, I've gone from there, underneath my cord there, around over the top of the, the loop that I created earlier then it's going underneath itself there coming out over the loop like so and then all I'm going to do is just hold that and just bring it up tighter a little bit tighter so that I end up with a small carrick bend and you can see here I've now created a carrick bend on my finger and there's a loop round the back of the carrot bend. Next thing I'm going to do is take each working end in turn. So I'm going to take the far one here and I'm going to bring it round and where it's looped round my finger, I'm going to bring it round, pass it through the center there, but on the other side of the other of the loop under my finger. So in other words, there it's coming out of my finger. I'm going round the outside of that and then bringing it up through the middle like so. Let's take that out of the way a bit. And you'll see again with this one, I'm going to come past that, past that point there and bring it up through the middle there. So I'm going to go 
round like so and then pass it up well slipping out slightly pass it up make sure it goes through the middle a little bit fiddly trouble is I'm working for a camera as well as myself um, there it is and that's passed through so basically it's gone round there round the outside of that one down here through the middle and then pull through and the next thing I can do is I can grab both the cords like so and gently pull on both the cords and now we've done that I can slip it off my finger and we can gently tease it up from both directions and you'll gradually see that as I tease it up we're starting to get a single diamond knot or a lanyard knot starting to appear and you can just pull it round and then tease it through like so that's it and then what I will do is I will eventually go round with my fid here and pull it up so I end up with a nice tight knot here before I go on to my next knot so that's what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go around and tighten it up so I'll just all I'll do is pull out any slack in it follow the leads round pull up any slack and end up with a nice tight knot at that point so the next thing is going to do exactly the same as we did before in creating a carrick bend at approximately this point here in our cordage so what I'm going to do is once again just put it over my finger like so just try and keep it fairly central and square so there we go bring them over like so and then like before I'm going to put a loop in this one here and you can see here I've created a loop like so and it's passing over the top one like so and the next thing I'm going to do is and obviously the th I'm sorry the thumb has to hold it in position otherwise you can't see where I'm going here now but what I'm going to do now is take this bottom one here and bring it underneath this cord here so pass it underneath the cord like so bring it round slightly slipped out of place so I've brought it round underneath this cord here it's coming round here and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over this one under this one over this one so here we go over then under like so and you can let it pull through slightly and there we go and I've just done that so now whoops like so and you can see once again here just pull it up a bit tighter I have now tied another carrick bend at this particular point and underneath is my original loop right so now that we've got the carrick bend here in the first step we then went round and came up through the middle but we're not going to do that in this particular case we're basically going to go round the loop here so we're going to the left hand side the left hand side of this one coming out here and we're going to follow this lead all the way around till it comes out here again so if I go up through there follow the lead round so you can see I've taken it to the left hand side of that one and now I'm starting to follow that round and then bring it round follow it round like so it's now tucked through like there gonna have to pull it up a little bit tight because we've got little to work with bring it round up through there like so and then so we're following we basically started to follow it all the way around so let me show you we've come up through there we're following this lead here it's going round following this one round so the next thing it's got to do is go down under and then come out and so there it is you can see now it's gone round 
up there, followed the lead round there, and come out underneath alongside this one here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do exactly the same for this lead here. We're coming up round the back. So if I bring it round the back here like so. So here's my lead here. It's going to come round to the left hand side of that piece there and follow this lead round here. Now there is another video I've done um, with a larger piece of cordage. Um, if you want to have a look at that, if, you, if it's difficult to follow this one, then just take a look at that one. I'll put a link to where that is as well in the description. So as you can see here, I've come in to the left hand side of this cord here and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow that cord all the way round. So there, it then goes under those two. So we're following it round underneath those two. Coming out next to it. That's it. Round there, like so. Just keep following it round like so and then eventually we go underneath the final two let there like so just follow it round slightly tricky perhaps I should have got my grip fit out but you can do it with just your fingers and there we go so now I've got one lead coming out that side, another lead coming out that side. And what I'm going to do now is just pull up on it gently, just to give myself some more lead. I need just a little bit more lead, just pull it up a bit tighter. And you can see as I'm doing it, it's also starting to form into a double diamond knot here as such. Okay. And so you can see here now, as I do this, it's gradually getting a little bit smaller and forming up into that diamond knot that we're trying to create here. Now the next thing we want to do is, this lead here needs to follow that single strand round there to that point there and then come up to, through the middle. And the same with this one. This one here wants to follow that single strand round there past that point here where our original loop is and come up through the middle. And so that's what we're going to do next on this one. Okay, so like I said in the previous section, we're going to, we've come out here and we've come out here with our two leads. And what we need to do is we're going to come up through the middle here. So what I've done is I've got my grip fit and I'm going to push it through and then we're going to follow this lead round here and come out through the middle. So I'm going to pass that to my grip fit, bring it up through the middle like so, and just gently pull it through. And then the final one, this one here, still wants to follow that lead round there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass it round the middle and bring it up through. So this is our lead coming up through the middle. This is the one we still haven't processed yet. And as you can see, it's coming round here. It wants to follow this lead round here, but it doesn't want to go up round there. It wants to come to the left-hand side of our original loop. So what I'm going to do is just pass my grip fit through the center here like so. Then pass my lead into it there and bring it up through the middle. And so now both my leads should be coming out through the middle. And once again, what I'm gonna do is just gently tease this up, pull my cordage through like so. Slightly harder to follow because we've got a double knot now as opposed to a single knot. But you can see here now, as I'm pulling it up, our double diamond knot is starting to appear in our cordage. And then just pull up on this slack piece here. Just keep going round, pulling it up. 
like so, until eventually we've got all the slack up and whoops, I pulled it too hard there. And then, where have I, what have I done with it? I've just pulled it too hard. So I need my grip fit again there. Just to pull that through. No. See, it's not easy. Not always easy, so I've accidentally pulled it through. But if you make a mistake, you can always pull it back again. There we go. And that's up through the middle again. And gradually, as you, as you create more knots, you will understand the dynamics behind it and how it flows, etc. And you can see here now, that diamond knot is doubling up quite nicely and it's looking rather good. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go around and tighten it all up and then come back to this. Okay then, and there we have it. What I've done now is I've gone round, I've tightened it up, it's nice and firm and got a lot of resistance to it. And you can see here now, I've created quite a nice, pretty little um, key ring, which is the lanyard knot as such. Now the choice here is yours. You can if you want to, depending on what, what cordage you use as well. Um, if say for example, I'm using some three strand natural cordage say, what I would do is I would possibly trim these ends down a bit and then brush them out so I end up with like a horse's tail sticking out here at this end. Or you can leave the cut these strands off to whatever length you want. And that in itself is a bit of decoration. Or if you really want to, you can go right up in there, cut it in nice and tight against there. So we just end up with a nice short lanyard with the single lanyard knot here or the diamond knot and the single or double diamond knot sorry, the double lanyard knot or the double diamond knot here at this point here. Um, the choice is yours. And like I say, if it was slightly longer, it could possibly be a soft shackle as well. But in this particular case, what I've got here is just a simple decorative key ring.